This is Ed for Mad Travels. And I'm here to talk about the reality of moving to a new country from the U.S. These are some very important tips that might be able to help you have a smooth transition in starting a new life, a new career abroad. Number one. Number one, you're going to experience culture shock. And that's an important part that goes along with number one is doing your research before you decide where you move to. And when I talk about culture shock is that you're mo moving to a totally different country, usually a different language, different food, and just different in the way that they do things. So that is something that you really, truly have to think about. And I suggest that you take a trip there first. Don't just do it blindly. Take a trip, get a chance to see what the people are like. Are they friendly? And what are their religious beliefs? What do they believe in? How they act? And are you able to assimilate adjust and get used to that new culture. So there is going to be some culture shock. Me living in Cambodia for the past six years, I've had to learn and adapt to the way that they do things. And that helped me grow as a person because just because they do it differently doesn't mean that they're wrong. That's just the way that they do it. Number two is a major one, and that's the food. Uh, you're not going to be presented with the same food options you are uh, presented with here in the States, whether it's at the grocery store, with whether it's at a restaurant. A lot of these countries do have similar restaurants, KFCs, McDonald's, Burger Kings, Pizza Hut, things like that. But even the food in those restaurants or those chains are different based upon, number one, the culture and what they find to be normal. So I would suggest that you look into the culture. I mean, look into the food, see if it's what you like, and there's no better way to find that out by tasting it. And I will give you one bonus tip when it comes to the food. Despite my health issues, I found that I am in much better health living in a country like Cambodia and Southeast Asia because there's less processed foods, less additives, less preservatives, and I eat more fresh food on a day-to-day -day basis. I just had to go around and find what I liked. Some I didn't like, some of it I loved. And I had to learn how to get used to that, what are the ingredients, what do they taste like when I'm cooking for myself. So food is very important. And number three, which is a big one, what is the climate? In Cambodia, you don't have four seasons. You know, there you have, it's always warm. It's always what people consider hot. But you have dry season and rainy season. I mean, to me, that's basically it. Uh, granted, other countries, you are going to have the winter. You are going to have the summer. You are going to have the fall. But I've heard a lot of people that have moved this. I mean, I just couldn't get used to the heat, the cold, whatever it is. So it's important that you, again, do your research, 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 research about the climate. And are you able to adapt and live in that sort of climate? Number four, which is extremely important, is money. The cost of living. Uh, granted, you might get a favorable exchange rate, like in Colombia, which has gone down actually, but in Colombia or in Cambodia where it's 4,000 real usually to $1. So your money goes further and that, so make sure that you have enough money to support the lifestyle that you want in that country before you go and understand that that, that exchange rate might fluctuate. So, uh, and that ties into cost of living. The cost of living, what are apartments, what are food, what is transportation, what is entertainment, what is travel. All of those type of things are very important. So money, cost of living, those two sort of go together. 
You really need to know that what you're doing there, um, whether it's a retirement pension, is it enough to support you? Or if you're working, to understand that maybe the job market there isn't that great even for the locals, let alone you're going to come there and find a job that's going to support your desired lifestyle. Whether you might want to get into teaching or something like that, training, hospitality, or working remotely, being a digital nomad, working for another country so you're getting, say, U.S. income, but you're living in a foreign country and you're able to live the lifestyle that you want. Number five, this might get a little touchy, but I've seen this and I have to be transparent and real. Entitlement. A lot of foreigners move to other countries assuming that they're going to be able to have access to certain things, that they're going to be treated a certain way, maybe even treated more special. Having a sense of entitlement is a huge negative attribute to have. You are in their country. You are a guest in their country. Therefore, besides like respect, safety, things of that nature, you're not entitled to anything. You're leaving a country where everything is right here at your beck and call. You can write, drive right down the street to a superstore. You have a huge selection of everything that you want. You can order this. Amazon is going to have it to you within 24 hours. But when you move to another country, that is not usually the case. So get your mind and body ready that that's not going to happen. Shipping something like where I live, and I always go back to Cambodia because that's where I live now for the past six years. Amazon is expensive. I use, uh, for certain things, I'm able to get through AliExpress, which is the Chinese version, but I don't have the selection. The prices are cheaper, maybe the quality. You have to really be careful, but I can get Amazon, but it's going to cost me if I really want it. So... Don't go with that entitlement. And this thing of, I have rights. No, you don't. Not always. Nine times out of ten, you're going to lose to the local. If it comes to uh, <laughs> where you have a conflict with the local or the courts, you're going to lose. And it's going to cost you. So keep that in mind. So chill down on the entitlement and open your mind up to being more open and adapting to the fact that you are a guest in that country. They don't owe you anything. And that ties in perfectly with my last point. They don't care. The locals don't care. What you did, what degree you have, you know, what education you have, and all of that. And that ties directly in. That's a bonus tip. They don't care. Perfect example in Cambodia during the pandemic in Siem Reap where I live, Temple Town, huge um, tourist town. They dug up all the streets. They redid the infrastructure, new sidewalks. And it was a mess for a while, especially when rainy season hit because it was mud, dirt. And there were so many foreigners and expats complaining. Oh, they don't know what they're doing and they need to do this and they need to do that. And you know what? They didn't care. They don't care what you did back in the States. And the very important thing is stay out of their politics. If you, you can't vote, you don't have a dog in that fight. And nine times out of ten, and this is very important, you are going to get yourself in trouble. Speaking your mind, speaking out loud about their politics, their prime minister, their laws, what they decide to do. Nine times out of 10 is not going to work out well for you. Again, this is Ed from Ed Travels. I hope these tips help you open your mind to think. Number one, the greatest tip of all, do your research before you pack your stuff up and jump off the cliff and move to a new country. It might save you some time and aggravation and most of all, some money. Thank you so much for your support of my channel. Please hit the like, subscribe, the bell icon so you can get notifications. Again, this is Ed from Ed Travels. I'd like to thank you for joining me. Remember, 
I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Airborne all the way. Thank you.